Oh, so nothing makes you wonder what the hell you're doing quite like uh, when the temperature drops down to uh, 9 degrees and the snow falls and it gets really, really cold and you think, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Are my wife and I really about to go and live in an RV trailer for God knows how long? You know, a nice central HVAC system really is a beautiful thing. A real fireplace that you can burn real wood in is a real beautiful thing. But yep, the adventure, the adventure is about to start. And we will be leaving our big old house shortly. So we kind of figure, uh, we bought the, uh, we bought the trailer yesterday so that it has to get prepped. So we're thinking about a month, uh, cause we have to work out. The big thing, actually, the weirdest thing we have to work out is um, is mail. So we have to get the bills paid, especially if we leave for a long time, make sure they get all paid, um, and then dealing with mail. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. I mean, basically, in order to, uh, to, to get this thing ready for us not to be in it for a while, since we're waiting a month, uh, we'll basically be past the, the hard freezing season. So we don't really have to worry about weatherizing it too much. And so, uh, so basically, we're just gonna turn the water off, turn a lot of things off, lock up the doors, uh, you know, put the security system on, give a couple people the keys, and away we will go. Oh, oh, what the hell are we doing? Yesterday, the yesterday, it was weird. Like to um, when we were buying the the trailer. Because all the way up until we bought the trailer, all the way up until I handed over the check for the trailer, I was feeling really good. I was feeling very excited. But then it was like at that point where you hand over the money and you realize that you're actually doing this is where the, the bottom kind of fell out of my stomach. It's that, that fear that you get whenever you're going to be doing something that's massively new. And, uh, and it's weird, you know, when people think about fear, they think about it in, in a way that's different than at least the, what I recognize as fear. Because I always have fear, it's like the bottom falls out of my stomach. And there's so many things that go along with the fear. It's a question of, am I doing something that is actually in fact smart? Am I doing something that I'm going to be happy about a year or two from now? Or am I doing something that I'll look back on and just shake my head? But the other big thing that I look at or that, that, that fear affects me is more more the fear of losing what I'm leaving behind and that's one of the things like nobody really talks about a lot when we talk about fear and all that kind of stuff is because for me and my wife I mean for the past nine and a half years we have led basically the, the pretty much the quintessential marriage story in a lot of ways you know we met our we met each other at the bar about a week later we had our first date after that we basically never left uh, each other's sides other than business trips and that kind of thing uh we more or less moved in together uh, after three days we officially moved in together after three weeks uh, we had our first house or townhouse at about five month mark uh, we had texts we got texts at about the eight month mark we got married at about the two year mark we were there and then we moved out here you know, to the suburban home because we figured, you know, kids and all that kind of stuff. And that's about when normalcy, <laughs> that's when about normalcy decided to check out on us. All the way up until then, we were pretty, doing pretty good with the whole normal life. And then, and then everything just kind of went cockeyed, eh? And so that's what we're looking at as we go out in this RV trailer and what we're about to do is that we've just had that realization that normalcy is not for us. We aren't going to have the 2.5 kids. We aren't particularly that worried about business and employees and all that kind of stuff. And so we're going out to see what there is in the rest of the world. But there is a loss there. And that's the thing, like I say, when, you, when people talk about fear, I think there's a lot of emotions that get mixed up all together and they kind of lump it into one thing and the people don't really understand it is it's like you know that when I have things like fear when I have the sensation of fear it's not simply fear there is the fear uh, of the future there is the fear of frankly I'm I'm not sure what it's going to be like to be towing behind towing a 2700 pound trailer uh, behind my SUV as we go through the mountains I'm a little scared of that to be honest with you to be completely honest towing that is is a little scary but, you know, that's the type of thing that most people think about with fear. But it's also the realization of the things that you're leaving behind. Um, it's the dreams that you had. Like in order to go and in order to do any new major project, two things are happening. One, you're going to do that new major project. 
But two, it also means that whatever you were doing before is over. For whatever reason, maybe good reasons, maybe you cashed out and made a lot of money, or maybe bad reasons, maybe disease or whatever happened. So whenever you start any new venture, there's two things that are actually occurring all at the same time. There's the, there is the new adventure and all the stuff that goes along with that, but then there is leaving behind the dreams and what there was before and all the you know baggage that goes along with it. One of the interesting things since our, uh, our dog Tex just died uh, three or four weeks ago, there was, a, there was a quote I heard a long time ago about when a pet dies. And somebody said that when a pet dies, two things actually die. And they said that when your pet dies, the two things that die is one, your pet, obviously your pet is dead, but also the person that you were when you got that pet dies. So like we have all these dreams and we have all these ideals and we have all these ambitions and we have all these plans and it's very easy to forget about what we meant to do or it's very easy to forget about what our original concepts are. But then when your pet dies, you start thinking about all those things. And you think about the now, you think like we think about Tex as a nine-year-old dog, but you also, at that moment, you remember Tex when you had him and you could basically hold him in your hand the first time you realized that he liked to play soccer. And you think about those moments, but on top of the moments there, you also remember the townhouse. You also, like for me, I remember the dream when I was building my business and I was getting employees. Before I learned to hate employees, back when I thought employees were going to be absolutely wonderful. And all this stuff comes flooding back to you. It is both things that you have to deal with. So yeah, there's your little philosophical thought for today. So we are going ahead with this. We are going ahead with this. My wife has basically made me promise that if we go out for the RV for a year and we like it, that we sell the house. And it's a weird thing. Like I say, it's not necessarily bad to sell the house. The house, house is too damn big. And that, but that's, you know, when you look at it, when you think about selling a house that's too big, but you have to realize, you have to remember, or you do remember why you bought it. We bought it to move out to the county. So if we have kids, the kids can go to good schools. And again, I mean, it's a, it's a foolishly large house for two people and one dog. But, you know, if you have two kids in there, it's still a big house. But, uh, but it would shrink really quick, especially two teenagers. Woo! <laughs> Any house shrinks with two teenagers in it. But that is not to be. That is not to be. So there we go. I don't know what date we are today. What is this? This is February 15th, I guess. And so we are we are prepping and preparing. So we've officially, we've officially purchased the trailer. Uh, the, uh, the trailer people that we purchased it from are now getting it prepared. So I guess they have to make, it's all, make sure it's all greased and cleaned and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully by the end of the week, we will have the trailer in our hands. Uh, and then we'll start playing with it and figuring things out. And on top of that, because uh, it is that time of the year, we basically have to deal with our taxes and we have to deal with our bills and we have to f deal with the divesting. So, uh, so again, regardless of however the, the RV thing turns out, we have decided to get rid of a lot of stuff and we will be downsizing at some point, whether it's this year or next, again, regardless about the trailer. So we've got all that stuff in front of us. So we're figuring, figuring about a month. That'll put us into the middle of March. And then we will start driving with our RV. Me, my wife, my Tonto, and a trailer. And we will see how the adventure goes. I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. But as with all things, there's both excitement and there's fear. And the reality is you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen.